I'm going to zoom back in here and look at this trade and kind of go one candle at a time. And we're going to assume that we're still in this original trade, right? Okay, we've got our trend there, right? It's holding us up. Perfect. So this is a point where we would say, okay, we're actually making more and more and more profits as time goes on with this trend, okay? Here, we could exit the trade here. So, so that would be trigger point number one, if you wanted to just take guaranteed profits. So, so that would be kind of saying, we were in the trade here, um, we exited the trade 2.26%. You could also adjust this out to a more local piece and give yourself a little bit more breathing room on this trade. That's perfectly acceptable too, right? Unfortunately, as you see, our first trend was bang on. And, and we actually took the perfect trade there. You can give yourself a little bit more breathing room, right? Would have made, I believe it was a scandal here. Hard closes the trend. And I'm sure, I'm sure there's, if you did move this more exterior wise, like what I, what I did, or, or sorry, the, the local trend, giving it a little bit more breathing room, you can still see that moment in, in the local time frame. So, so you can still see that moment where, hey, I'm losing trend. You should probably look for an exit before the larger dump, right? Like that, that's just, you know, we're on 15 minute time frames. Don't, don't be surprised when you see a huge candle, you know, kind of, kind of sink down like that. Where did we find this original trend? I believe it was, we got a five minute chart. Um, I'm not sure where we find the, found this original trend, but okay, no, never, nevertheless, that's fine. It was, it was kind of like this region, right? Oh, that's why it was this right here. So, so, so that's fine. That that's a clear trigger point, right? Distribution candle to distribution candle gives you your trigger point exit, right? So if you were in this trade here, you would have said, okay, I either hit my target. I take my trade there, right? You make your 1.2, you re-enter here, right? So you've made 1.2. Measurement tool. Oh, it's still on. You've made, you've made your 1.2. You went from this candle hold to this trigger point here. You made another 1.59 or one. Well, we'll just call it 1.6. That's fine. Easy math. So you're up 2.8%. Alternatively, in the other scenario, you were from here to here, 2.2%. So you've increased the amount that you can make based on having trigger points. So you had a trigger exit, you had a trigger entry, and then you're, you're simply just using hold levels and trends to dictate where you're exiting trade instead of always looking at targets above, right? Now, it doesn't mean this is from, from here to here isn't a valid trade. It doesn't mean that from this to this isn't a valid trade. It's not always going to get executed, but it doesn't mean it's not a valid trade. But then if, if, you're, if you're going to go after that bigger target up here, you also have to use your bigger trigger points. So once this breaks down, you're just forfeiting the profits of you know, whatever you make. So we're just going to play this through a little bit here just till we get to this other trend, you know, we're, we're on that trend now and no, we're not hard closing yet. That's fine. And we intersect with our larger trend. So over time, instead of actually just hitting this as a target, we simply hit our trend, which, which is going to not allow us to go after this. Now, sometimes you are going to have go to the whole level, fake trend break, go down. But that's not always the case, but, but that happens often, like when, when a trend is going to break. So for example, if this trend was going to break, I would expect this to come attack this whole level before rocketing up. Like I would say, oh, we're going down to this whole level right here, like that. And, and, and you rocket up on, on over to break this, kind, kind of the extreme whole level that's going to break the trend, right? The injection point before a massive trend break. That's, that's how I would expect trend to be broken there. I would also delete those. I would also expect this trend to hold off of this whole level. So, so you go, you fake break, and then you fail down in a big way, right? This just kind of respecting trend just tells me that it's more of an elongated move that's going to Pandora's box between some kind of levels in here. Nevertheless, it becomes a target and a trigger point. Like if you were in, you have to think of this, if you were in a short from up here, right? If, if you were in a short from up here, you, like you entered off of whatever hold level here and you said, oh, here's my trigger point. Once this breaks, you'd also relatively exit. So you have the same trigger point on the other side, exiting the trade here. So it's, it's, you're going to have the same trigger point from here, a short from here that's saying, oh, I'm going to exit once this hard closes is, is the same thing we are, we are doing right now on the opposite side. So you just, just keep that in mind. So you're at, you're at this, you're in this trade here. You've profit capped yourself from here to here. Remember, this is the profit cap. 
of the move. This is where it's going to go before it tests and pulls back. This is the maximum that can be made. Four points, we're going to call it 4.2. We're just going to round up 4.2. Okay, 4.2% maximum it can make. Alternatively, it hit 3.79. Fine, we're still in this trade until our lovely trend breaks down, right? So, so then, then, then you're right here. Then at this point, you are saying, you, I'm sure you had some kind of sign in here on a lower time frame, or uh, you know, even if you got out right now, that's fine. We're just going to take this as an exit. 3.04 instead of 3.79. So we, we've developed a few different scenarios here now. So let's talk about all the scenarios. Scenario one, we took this to this, and then also this to this, giving us 2.8%. That was one way we executed triggers on this trade. Taking this to this is 3%, right? Trigger points, as, as you can see, give you more profits and eliminate the need to hold things because you made 2.8 here and you made, I think it was 3.04 here, 3.04 here. The difference is very small. If the difference is saying, oh, do I want to take this hold level as an exit or this hold level? It's the same, same splitting of profits, the same splitting of hairs, right? Your, your profits aren't that much. Now we're going to say, okay, fine, great. So, so in one case, we started scalping and, and we kind of stopped the scalping right here. We said, oh, we're going to stop the scalping right here and, and no longer be in any of this, right? So we're going to stop the scalping there. Let's delete. No, no, we're going to keep this one. If we had never entered a trade, we made almost relatively the same money. Now we're going to use the next hold level here, enter this trade. Same thing. We enter this trade here. We take our trigger point and we put it right here. We either so, so this trade was executed. So we're going back to scenario two now, I believe it was. Well, it was scenario one or two. I don't, I'm not sure which one I named it. But anyways, the scenario where we're scalping and we're already in 2.8% profits. You're in the same scenario. All you've done is fray out your trigger point, right? Take your hold level, fray out your trigger point to here. And we're going to use this candle here. A hard close this candle on a smaller time frame here. So you've, you've got another 1%. You could have possibly made a full 2% on this. That's a heck of a trade. You could have even used, oops, you could have even used this one to this to give you your next trigger point, right? So, so you could have even continued to go more interior, interior, interior with these trigger points. And you see one trigger point breaks down to fray out this to the next trigger point that breaks down to go to the next trigger point, J just as trends are supposed to act. But you know, when we get to be better traders, we call them trigger points because we understand their value is that once this trend here breaks, it's going to go after the larger trend from here to here. So once this breaks, you can expect a price gap between there to that one at, at a minimum. So, so there's, there's almost a losing of profits there, right? So let's measure the losing of profits. When you break this one, if you're going down to the next one, come on, if you're going down to the next one, you're gonna lose, we're just gonna call it 0.7. I believe it's uh, about, about 0.7 there, it's 0.65. Okay, so we'll say 0.6. You're going to lose 60% in this trade if you're 100x leveraged, right? So, so it's almost a, a polarity gap from trend to trend to trend, right? So by hard closing this trend, you are going to lose that. And that's why they become so valuable trigger points because you're, you're just simply forfeiting profits, right? If this, go back to right here, right? If this trend is going to continue holding, it's, it's simply going to break down to it's either its next hold level, right? Or its next trigger point, which you can see right there. Breaks probably breaks down to its next hold level somewhere. Yeah, right there. And it actually loses the next trend and breaks down to its final trigger point. But that, but that, that, is, that is a separate trade completely. That, that trade, like if we were to delete all of these trigger points, you're still in the confines of the larger trigger point, right? You're still in the confines of the larger trend getting you to your target. So you're still in that same confine of that trend. So, so really... All you've done is put yourself back into a scenario where you're saying, okay, position trade, swing trade, scalp trade, right? Like this is, it's the same thing that you're, you're, you're just bringing yourself back into that local, global legacy part of the move, interior versus exterior, right? It's that same splitting of timeframes that we always do, that concept of time that we're always using constantly to kind of help us dictate what's going on. So when you're using these trigger points, you're using, like if, if, you're, if you're scalping, you're using your most aggressive trends, right? If you're doing position trading, you're doing your most, or, or sorry, if you're doing position trading, you're using your most long, your, your longest 
legacy trends. If you're scalping, you're using your most interior pieces. And if you're swing trading, you're using the in-between that dictates the moment from swing trade to position trade. So the great thing about these trigger points is that it allows you to procedurally trade appropriately, right? So, so if you're, let's, and we're going to do an example for this. So, so if you're in this moment here and you say, okay, here's the uh, whole level right here. Once this breaks, this move is going to uh, gap up. We've got our, our swing low here. We've got a distribution candle. Okay, we're right there. Great. You can just simply exit this trade once this trend breaks and you have a polarized moment that's going to gap you up to the next level, which it does. And once that breaks, you can simply get out of the trade, right? Now it's going to have to break on a time frame that you can justify, right? Like you could have gotten out there in profits. You could get out here in profits. But again, we're not, we're not going to sift through moves today to find hold levels and time frames, more so about the trigger points in the moves, right? So no matter what trade you're in, you're always going to have some type of trigger point in the move. You're either going to have a trigger point that you're using to scalp a trade. You're going to have a trigger point that you're using to swing trade or position trade. And, and this is a layer on top of hold levels because we also have targets above, right? So if you go to a bigger time frame, I'm sure you're going to see targets above in here or possibly uh, 15 minute, some type of, yeah, you have one right here. And, and then you probably have a front side combination level there. Yeah, right here. Some kind of front side combination level right there, right? Like backside front, some, some kind of backside front side combination level that's, that's still holding this thing down. And then you'd simply be in the next range, which would be here. Can't quite target that right there or some other higher time frame, right there, right? You just go back to the 15 minute candle here. That's fine. Or possibly trend, right? So this could also be a higher time frame backside right here or trend, like I said. So again, trigger point from the top, right? So let's delete some of these levels here. We need that one. We need that one. We need that one. We don't need this, right? We don't need this. This is being broken right now. So we, we are fully expecting this to move down to its range, which is something like this, uh, this range here, possibly even, right? And so it does, it goes right to this range, right? It goes right here from, from here to here, exactly what we'd expect giving us a new trigger point in this trade. So if we had entered, uh, did I miss one here? I think I missed one. Yeah, I guess I did miss one. No, that's okay. So if we had entered this hold level, we, we simply have a trigger point to get us out of the trade, right? So, so imagine you have your untested hold level right here. You have this one right here. It broke, it polarized you right to the next one. Perfectly fine. Gap to gap, right? We, we know about this already. And just like this one will gap to this one here. And then even down to here, right? So gap to gap to gap to gap. And we draw trend based on that being hit, which brings us to moving our actual level to right here. So as you have your final hold level in the move, you have your uh, trigger point in this move that's going to break down, right? So you could simply be in this trade, like an example of a trade here. You could be in this trade saying, oh, I have a trend breaking here and I have a trend breaking here. Okay. I've entered here. So I'm safeguarded in either way. I've entered long here. If we lose this trend, I'm going to exit because I know I'm going to gap down to this range here and I'm going to go like this and I'm going to pull up my trend like so to here. And then I'm going to just recreate that whole same scenario where you hit the level, you're going to give yourself a final hold level, polarizes the moment and uh, gaps you to the next untested hold. So, so then you can do it one, two, three, four, five times and you, and you can just be sitting in this trade. And if, you, if you're so astute that it's going to go long, you could just play every single hold level and, and use trigger points as exits, right? So we're just going to sit here. Yeah, great. Oh, and that's where we are right now. Oh, so we, we haven't even exited this trade yet. We could possibly just be in this trade still and, and just be using this trigger point to exit the trade. Oh, it's actually perfect timing. It's, it's actually current. That's great. So, so you could just use this as an exit on your trade. And if you don't have an exit, you simply have a target on the other side. Like here's a target right here. There's the back side. So, so you, you know, your trade became from here to exactly this. So you made your 1.2%, right? And it's, it's perfect. And now you're going to be re-entering down. This was tested. This was tested. Polarized now from here to there, right? So, so you're polarized from 9161 to 9060. So there's kind of this $100 polarity point. 
so so when you when you took this trade and you have this whole level here and you're you're buying long here, you can simply stay in it till your trend breaks. Now you don't have to. You have targets on either side. Just just like this could have been a target right here, right? This, this is the whole level holding it down. This could have been a target right here. And you could have re-entered then on this one right here. So you could have re-entered here. You could have targeted there. Targets and trigger points. And, and it's the way in which we can decide where we want to take exits and profits in a trade. You always kind of start this thing. Like I'm going to go back to a higher time frame here. Maybe just the hourly for this. You're going to go to a higher time frame and you're going to design what's happening in the move with your bigger trigger points, which are also trends, right? Because once this trend breaks, it's going to be a trigger point for other shorts to exit, right? So short, shorts who are sitting up here, you're simply going to use this trend to exit. So, so that moment, it, it, it could possibly just continue to do this. Who knows how long? It could be down here somewhere, like $6,000 and then break and, and the trigger exits are here to here, right? Like that's, that's how you trigger an exit point, right? Like you could just stay in this trend perpetually until it breaks, just like you could do it right now on a local time frame. You could just, the more local, the smaller the targets, the more exterior, the bigger the profits and the bigger the targets, right? So, so you're using these larger trends to dictate where this thing could possibly go. So again, you could, you could on, alternatively, we could have entered that long until from this moment here, whatever this whole level is here, we could find ourselves all the way, like, just theoretically, you could be here. $12,000. As long as that trend doesn't break, you're, you're still moving against it. But the moment that trend breaks, you, you just use it as a trigger point to exit the trade. You have a target above. So you could use this trend theoretically and say, oh, my exit is here. This is my, my, my target is 97. Like, where's my profit cap? You use your trigger point to take you to your profit cap. So you either exit at your profit cap, which you've defined as a profit cap, or you simply stay in the trade on your trigger point, right? Your actual trend, right? So it just triggers the exit of your trade and why I call it trigger points, right? So let's go back in here, take a look. See what's happening right now in this move. Uh, what are we looking at? 15 minute, five minute, and obviously this one is gone. We don't need that anymore. Uh, this was for, oops. This was for right here. This range is already tested. So you're somewhere around here in this, uh, possibly even on this. But, but anyways, your, your trade exists here, not, not in this moment right now. Your, your trade exists here, right? Alternatively, you could use trigger points as entries as well, right? Like you could say, oh, here's a trigger point. Identify the trend. That's also a trigger point for entries, right? Like you could enter on that trend and just exit on the lower trigger point, right? Like you can enter on this trend break, exit on this trend break. It's a little riskier for obvious reasons because you could just use this trend right here. You know, uh, this stops it right there and then it breaks down, right? So it's, it's a little riskier, but also, you know, it's why we buy hold levels and not trends, right? Trend, trends are more exits for trades as to where hold levels are entries. They're, they're perfect entries because hold levels are very easy to find, right? Like polarized moments, they're not so easy to understand and not so easy to find, but polarization exists and, 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 a trend is polarization too, right? Like it, 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 a trigger point will say, okay, this is moving up. We just broke a trend. We're moving up. But that's, I think, where people get it wrong is that trends are exits, not entries. People try to buy trend breaks. Trend breaks are exits. So think about it for a second. If you're in a short from here, right? So if you're in a short from here, this trend break is an exit for your short. It's not an entry for a long. An entry for a long is here and the exit for the long is here right? It's, it's, people have it confused. People have it the wrong way. They buy trend breaks. A trend break should be an exit, not an entry, All right? We're talking about very advanced trading here. We should already be in that trade if a trend is breaking. If, if, if this trend is breaking through, if, if that trend there is breaking through forward, we should already be in from a hold level before with a trigger point that defines where we exit in profits and that that trade simply is just still open until our trigger is, is, is released. Let's delete some of these brush marks here and I'll show you guys what I mean. Okay, we're going to delete a few lines here just to make this a little clearer. We're going to delete this. This one we can leave on. Uh, maybe we don't need this one anymore. We can just move that to... Uh, we, we can just delete it completely because that's, you know, if we, if we lose this and move in here, we're going to go down to here. So, so just to, to clean up this example, 
if we are long from down here, we exit that long when we break this trend, right? If you haven't hit your target. So that's, that's key. Like if you haven't hit your target, right? Or, or whatever you've decided your target is, wherever you've profit capped this thing based on timeframes to say, okay, we've made, you know, 4% is the possibility here. We're only at 1%. Let's not exit. Let's use our trigger and let's stay in the trade, right? Like you hit your target or you, you trigger your trade out. So you've entered here long. You exit this trade when this trend breaks. You don't enter a new short here. Your short should be entered from here, right? Or, or wherever your hold level is on the top side. So that's, that's where people get it wrong. You don't enter trends. You're just entering higher than you need to because there's always a better entry than trend. So trend is, is a, a defective entry because trend is meant to hold. So, so people who buy trend breaks, these are trigger points for exits. Right now, you can buy trend breaks. That's fine, but if you're buying a trend break, you should have saw it, seen it earlier and said, "Oh, well, this hold level is going to try to attack it. I should enter there." The difference between entering here versus here is how much? An extra one percent. Boy, that's a lot of flexibility in trade to have. An extra one percent, an extra hundred percent on a hundred x contract. That's a lot of flexibility to have because all of a sudden, where's your liquidation against? Like, okay, let's let's do do the opposite. Let's um, say say we. And we're going to delete brush strokes here for a second. One, two, three. Say we do want to buy this trend break, right? Well, we should do it on a hold level. We should do it here. So, so we're going to go here and, and buy that trend break like that. Okay. Where's your liquidation if you enter here? Let's, let's measure it. Boy, you're getting close to liquidated where this move should be holding, right? Holy crap. However, if you enter here, you're exiting in profits. You know, you're, you're exiting in profits because you're still up based on your trigger point 40%. You're still, you're still up based on this trigger point 40%. So the difference between trying to buy a trend break versus buying the whole level is liquidation. It's quite, quite simple as that, right? It's, it's liquidation. There is no, um, there's, there's no in between. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. Right. So where could be some possible entry? So, so fine. You enter here and let's say nine, three is your trade. Great. You made 1.46%. If you use your trigger point, you made 2.5%. You made a full percent more. That's great, but that's not the key piece of information here. The key piece of information is if we're hundred Xing and we're going to get liquidated, if we enter here, we could possibly be getting liquidated by hitting this trend, this, this whole level down here, which, which could be what's breaking the trend up, right? Also exit in negative profits, right? So, so you enter this whole level here. If you're exiting your, your trigger, hey, 40% loss, as opposed to using this whole level and you made 30%, right? It's a difference between being somebody who's profitable constantly versus somebody who is profitable when things go their way, right? So profitable when things go your way, yeah, that's, that's fantastic. But again, people get trends wrong. Trends aren't moments to buy breakouts. Hold levels break trends. Hold levels are the buys that we have and the trigger points that break on either side are what dictate what's happening with the trade. Swing low to swing low. We've got our, actually, you've got your hourly here, which is great because that's about to break. Yeah, people get trends wrong. Tr trends aren't breakout moments. They're, they're trigger points. You should already be in that trade anyways. And you should just be, in, you, you should by default be in the trade. If a trend is breaking, you should be in it based on a hold level and exiting profits if it's failing. If this trend continues to compress, if this trend right here, this one like that, if that continues to compress, even if we entered here, we're exiting in profits. We'll always be exiting in profits. If we entered here, we're exiting more profits. If we entered here, we're exiting more profits. If we entered back here where the trade first happened, we're exiting even more profits. But we don't have any thinking to do. We have a trend to design, a, a trigger point that is accurate to design. And once it breaks, we simply are out of the trade with profits, right? Just, just, just the same way as if it was on this side, right? You, you, don't, you don't buy these trend points. You buy the hold levels that attack them, right? You buy the whole levels that attack trends, and then you use your trigger points to dictate when you exit the trade. 